Welcome to GeoMage G-Platform. G-Platform is a full processing and project management system. The main window keeps track of your projects, flows, flow history, data, and a full set of customizable flow templates. In this video, we're going to go from raw field data to a finished post-stack migration in 15 minutes. All of our flows and views are already prepared, so we're going to go through them one by one for this demonstration. These flows can easily be converted to predefined templates and used for any similar project. We begin by loading in our raw seismic data set with our own customized dictionary. The View SegY module allows us to QC our SegY input parameters before we commit to loading the data. This module will display the traces and trace headers in addition to the EBCDIC and binary headers of the data. Next, we'll attach a geometry. We start by loading in our coordinates. In this case, we have SPS files, but we can take in any coordinate files, like SEGP. The read parameters for the S, R, and X files are set automatically, but we can easily QC and adjust these parameters by changing settings under the Manual Read sections. The helper vistas display the original files, and we can click and drag across columns to set the ranges for each section as appropriate. G-Platform will automatically detect potential problems such as duplicated shots or receivers within the file and display them in the Table Errors Vista. Now we will attach this geometry to the data with the Geometry Application module. Each of these modules has many useful displays. So, to keep things organized, we've arranged multiple windows over here in the View Manager. All of our displays and their arrangement will be preserved when we save the flow and will be restored exactly as is when we load it back up again. In Geometry Application, we can go through our shots, receivers, and field files in detail by clicking on any one of the map views or geometry tables. Clicking on the map will automatically move the shot, receiver, or field file view to that location and highlight the same place in the appropriate geometry table. We can quickly QC all the shots or receivers in the line with the automatic slide feature, which will move through one by one at a rate that you can set in the parameters tab. Bad sources and receivers are easily killed with a right click in the geometry table. G-Platform will display any mismatches between your coordinate files and your field data in the Table Errors view. We can automatically zoom to those problem records. In this module, it is also easy to do individual trace edits right in the Gather view. From here, we will take the data directly into automatic 2D binning. G-Platform will automatically generate a bin grid using the parameters we have set here or we can import a previously existing bin grid. The Bidding 2D Vistas provide a QC for the bin grid, including fold and grid direction information. These vistas automatically update when you run the module. Now that we have a geometry, we'll save this data to the database with the Save Seismic module. Inside Save Seismic, we'll give our new data item a name and choose the Save mode. We can save in direct mode, which saves the data in the same sort order we read it in as, or in append mode, which allows us to save the data in its new sort order. With this data saved, we can save the workflow and move right on to first break picking and refraction statics. Saved data shows up here in the data window, along with any other items we save to the database. In a new flow, we'll load in our data with geometry and then add in the Refraction FB Picking module and connect the two. The Refraction module here shows you which types of data it needs. In this case, SegY handle and trace headers. And when you click on the Read Seismic Traces module, you can see that it outputs both of these items. With a double click, our data is connected. G Platform has several methods for picking first breaks, so you can choose the option that best suits your data. The automatic first break picker is an excellent option for good data and uncomplicated first breaks. Using the bin selection vista and the location map, 
we'll pick a space variant LMO function at a couple of locations along the line. Then, the automatic first break picker takes care of the rest. In the QC views for the picker, we can see how well those first breaks are picked and easily address any problem areas. By clicking on any first break pick, we're automatically moved to that source location or receiver location. Here, we can manually adjust any errant picks or simply delete them by right-clicking and drawing a box around them. The Super Gather Picking mode is an excellent option for fine-tuning picks in more difficult areas. This allows us to pick more closely along a shot or receiver and use those selections to pick a Super Gather area around any selected shot or receiver. The Refraction Statics module automatically generates a surface-consistent refraction static solution when we run it. That static solution is easily checked using the SC Statics QC module, where we can view the results of the static solution across the line on shots, receivers, and on any individual shot or receiver gather. We can save any individual iteration of the statics run to the database to be retrieved later when we apply those statics to the data. We are now ready to do some noise attenuation before deconvolution. To do this, I'm going to open another workflow that we prepared earlier from our template flows. G-Platform comes with a full suite of noise attenuation algorithms to suit any need. In this case, we are going to remove some spikes and linear noise before deconvolution. These modules are run inside the seismic loop. The loop is an excellent way to test the parameters of any module on the fly at any point within your dataset. With our first module despike, we set up a map as well as the input, output, and different vistas automatically generated by despike. We can try any number of parameters of this module on our data without the need to run the entire line or separate out a smaller piece for testing. We can also run dSpike independently from the next module in the loop, LNA, to save runtime in our testing. We've set up a linear noise attenuation module, LNA, in another window so we can follow the same testing procedure. LNA is fully interactive and we can set the parameters for min and max velocity by drawing lines on our input gather. Once our testing is complete, we can run the entire line out to a new saved DB item. While testing, I use the option here to run, which only runs a single iteration of the loop. The double green arrow button here will run the entire loop, which will let us write out all of our shots using the Save Seismic by Gather module. Similar to Save Seismic, we can assign this new data item a nickname. G Platform allows you to define multiple storage locations for your data, and you can choose the storage that your new data will be saved to. This is especially useful if you need to save data across multiple hard drives. Now I will save and close this flow and move on to SCDCon. Saved workflows show up here in the Flows window. G Platform automatically saves the full revision history of every workflow, which can be found in the Revision History window. G Platform has a two part surface consistent deconvolution. In the first part, we can calculate and save our SC decon operators. We will calculate a full five component set of deconvolution operators. Here, we are using mute modules in the subsequence of SC decon calculate to set a window for the calculation. In this case, we tested the parameters in a seismic loop before adding them to our SC decon calculate. The subsequence of SCDCon also allows us to add as many pre-processing steps to the operation as we wish without generating extra unnecessary datasets that can use up much needed storage space. We'll save these operators to the DB. Likewise, it is easy to test the results of those operators in the SCDCon apply and see the results in gather and stack form without writing out extra datasets. With the SCDCon apply here in the seismic loop, we can test the decon apply on as many shots as we like and change parameters on the fly. It is also possible to test the decon parameters in stack without writing out another dataset by using the SC decon apply in the subsequence of stack imaging. 
The operators we save to the database can be recalled at any time, and we can choose to apply them in as many domains as we want. With a spherical divergence correction and surface consistent scale added, we will save our final set of decon gathers and move on to brute stack and velocity. Stack imaging is a one-stop shop for the creation of stacks, velocity analysis, and mute picking. We can add modules to the subsequences of stack imaging so that we don't need to generate extra output gathers. Here, we'll quickly pick a brute velocity and mute for the stack, and then put elevation and refraction statics corrections in the subsequence. Picking velocities is fully interactive. We can select locations for picks based on a regular grid, or by selecting specific locations on the map, output stack, or RMS velocity display. The output shot and common offset gathers update automatically with the new velocities picked on the semblance. We can save our picked velocities to the database, to an external text file, or just retrieve them from this module later. The same applies for mute picking. We can pick the mute directly on the output shot or common offset gather, and it will automatically be applied to our new output stack. We've saved the resulting output stack to the database. In this case, we're using the stack as a QC for our refraction static solution. In a second window, we can pull the stacks with and without statics correction from the database so that we can compare the images side by side and on top of one another. We can easily go back and revisit our refraction static solution by saving multiple versions of the statics correction to an item in the database and testing them in stack imaging. Next, we are going to calculate residual statics. We will begin with a set of decon gathers that we prepared earlier. The residual statics module can take in gathers with NMO already applied, or we can apply NMO inside the module itself. We can easily generate a base stack with one click. Using this base stack, we can set the parameters for residual statics, including the number of iterations and the calculation start and end time. Residual statics is an iterative process. We can choose to generate and display the effect of those iterations by changing the visualization settings here. And now that this is set, we can start the module. With each iteration of the statics run, our QC views here update with more information about each one. We can see the average energy of the stack improve and the average of the terms converge together. Each iteration of statics ends up as a new view stacked on top of our base stack, and we can switch between the various iterations to see the final results. If we decide we want to add some additional statics iterations on top of our initial run, we can check off Use Previous Result here, and our new statics run will take into account the results of our previous run. Once we are satisfied with our final statics, we can save these statics to the database and then apply them to all of our future stacks going forward using the Apply Static Shifts modules. With all of our final statics, velocities, and noise attenuation in place, we can now move into a post-stack time migration. Here, I've set up a flow to generate a stack without the stack imaging module, including our NMO corrections and all of the statics corrections. By using set gather, we can reset the process group to encompass the entire stack, which makes for very efficient testing of our post-stack noise attenuation. We've already put out and labeled all the vistas for each post-stack process. Here, we've applied a TV scale, then a spectral balance, followed by an FX decon. For procedures like spectral balance, it is useful to check the overall spectrum of your data before and after. Every window that contains seismic data has a spectrum analysis tool built in. We can easily add the spectra of every view available in this window to compare them all against one another. By default, we will see the spectra of the entire view, but we can easily select a smaller subsection to analyze just by drawing a box around it. To move into post-act migration, 
will save the resulting final stack after noise attenuation. Our post stack migration operates from topography, so we'll add another shift data to move our stack back to topography. We'll load our data back in with a read seismic traces and feed it into the migration module. We've generated a smoothed 2D velocity model by running our final stacking velocity through the smooth 2D module. We can retrieve our final stacking velocity directly from the last version of our stack imaging flow without the need to go back into the flow and save it out separately. Most items, such as velocities, statics, and mutes can be retrieved this way. Then we can run the migration and shift the data back to datum from topography. Our final migration is here on the right, next to our final structure stack on the left. With this migration saved, we'll write out a segue which is ready for delivery to our client or for further analysis. Thank you for watching our short processing demo. To get your own free evaluation license of G-Platform, please visit us at geomage.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more useful tutorials, tips, and updates on the latest features G-Platform has to offer.